everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we've got another $99 tablet that runs the full version of Windows, and this one comes from Best Buy, and this is their Insignia branded tablet. This is an 8-inch tablet, so if you compare this one to that other Windows tablet we looked at, the HP Stream 7, you've got a little bit more screen real estate, and uh, that extra screen size gives you a much nicer display to look at because things aren't as tiny as they are uh, on the HP. So that is a, a little bit of an advantage there. So we're going to boot it up real quick. Uh, under the hood, this is pretty much the same computer uh, as the HP Stream 7. They both have the same Atom uh, processor. There, there's a slight variation in the, in the number, but it's pretty much the same chip, same performance. And as you can see, it boots up pretty quickly, just like the HP does. Now, there are some differences beyond the screen size. So the first is that you get less storage on the uh, Best Buy version than you do on the HP. So the HP has a 32 gigabyte internal storage device, a solid state drive. Uh, the Best Buy version only has 16, so you're going to have a lot less uh, storage available to install software and other applications. So uh, you need to keep that in mind if you've got like something big to install, which I'm not sure you probably would on something uh, this low powered. Uh, you're going to suffer a little bit because you're not going to have all that much available after the Windows installation and the recovery partition. So the reality is like maybe you know eight or nine gigabytes, if that available for uh, applications to install. But what they did do, unlike the HP, is put the micro SD card slot on the outside so you can uh, you know, supplement that storage by uh, popping a card in here. And I, mine came with a 16 gigabyte card as a bonus. I bought a refurbished one for like $89, so I even got it for under 100 bucks. Uh, but it came with a 16 gigabyte uh, card in the box, and I think all the new ones do as well. So you do have some ability to you know, store some of your documents and videos and other things on the card, but the card will be slower uh, than the internal storage would be. So you just want to keep that in mind uh, moving forward. A few other things to look at. You've got the headphone jack here. Uh, you have an HDMI connector, which is very interesting. I'll talk about that in a minute. And you have a, a USB port. It does support OTG, which means you can get a cable and then plug keyboards and mice and other USB devices into the USB port. Uh, when those devices are plugged in, though, you cannot charge it. And there are uh, OTG cables that do let you charge and use devices at the same time, but not on these. So it doesn't work on this one, uh, nor does it work on the HP. So if you have a USB device to plug in, uh, you will not be able to charge it simultaneously. But of course, you could always get a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse and then uh, plug things in and charge them as you go. On this side, you've got a volume rocker, and then you have a, a switch here to lock the screen orientation. So if you don't want it to rotate every time you move it, uh, you just lock that in uh, in the position that you're in, and it will uh, stay put for you. And that is where uh, that kind of links up with this HDMI connector, because what you can do uh, is disable the internal display and then plug it into a monitor, a 1080p monitor, and get a 1080p signal out to that monitor. So you could basically get a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, uh, plug this thing into power, uh, shoot everything over to the external display, and you've got yourself a really cheap $99 uh, convertible PC, essentially, that one that you can uh, unplug and then take with you. So again, it's not gonna, going to really uh, knock your socks off in the power department because it's got that you know, relatively slow Atom processor and only a gigabyte of RAM like the HP does. But as we saw in the HP video, you can actually run a lot of useful software uh, both on uh, the Windows Metro UI, you know, the modern interface, as well as just running uh, Windows applications too. So that is uh, pretty cool. So let's just pop in here real quick and we'll uh, do a quick preview of the Metro interface. All right, I've got Outlook loaded up here and you can see that having a larger screen does make a little bit of a difference. It's a little bit easier to see things on the screen here because I have a little bit more screen size to work with. Uh, the resolution is the same as the HP Stream 7. So this is a 1280 by 800 display, uh, but it is larger. So if you're eyes are going this is going to be a little bit easier to look at um, but you know the performance is there it's pretty much the same performance as we saw in the HP you can also uh, of course do the split screen thing where you can uh, pull uh, two apps in together and then kind of move the things apart here so uh, it does have a really nice uh, snappy performance to it and again uh, this is a very uh, low impact interface that was designed to work with much slower processors than the uh, Intel Atom processor that's in here now performance wise this really does perform very similar almost the same as the HP does. So web browsing is very fast and zippy. Uh, the Octane uh, test that I run on all of my devices 
uh, runs at about the same rate of speed. So uh, there really isn't a noticeable difference, nor uh, was there actually a measurable difference. The octane test on these two devices uh, was largely the same. The, uh, the Best Buy one here is at 59.53 and the HP is at 58.97. So uh, almost directly in line with each other, mainly because they're pretty much running uh, with the exact same hardware. One anomaly I did see though is with the 3D gaming performance. So while Minecraft runs pretty much the same on both uh, with the settings turned down, uh, what I did notice though was that the octane test on uh, the Best Buy version actually was a little bit faster than the HP. It came in at 13,523 compared to 12,798. And I ran that test a couple of times just to see uh, if there was some kind of anomaly, perhaps maybe something was loading in the background on the HP or whatever, but they both pretty much uh, came in around those scores every time I ran it. So uh, it is a little bit faster on you know the benchmarking uh, side of things, but uh, when you're actually in the game playing, there really isn't much of a difference, but you do get the bigger screen. So you know it seems to run just fine when you really turn all the settings down. It does get a little bogged down here or there, especially when you've got uh, some of these wide open spaces that have to get rendered in. Uh, but again, it's, uh, it's passable uh, as a Minecraft device and maybe the larger screen might be attractive to you. But there is a difference in its disk write speed. As you can see here, we're writing at about 35 to 37 megabytes per second. That's a little less than half of what uh, the HP is able to write to its disk at. So there's definitely a little bit of a difference in the write performance of the internal storage. Uh, the reads are about the same though. So uh, you know, I think for most of what you'll do, again, you won't notice much of a difference. All right, I've got my monitor up on the table here because we're gonna check out the HDMI output. Now, if you disable the internal display on the device, you can get a 1920 by 1080 output. Uh, the touchscreen still works oddly enough, but you really don't know what you're pushing on. I just got lucky there by hitting the window. Uh, because, of course, uh, the display is disabled. So what you want to do is just make sure you get that aspect ratio lock uh, set because if you do turn the tablet, uh, it will rotate the screen and things will get rather odd. So my suggestion would be to either get it propped up somewhere where it'll stay consistently in the same position or uh, just push that button. Uh, the display quality isn't bad. Now, I've, I'm running this on a scaler on my video system here, so it might look a little distorted just because I didn't uh, get all the settings put together, but uh, it does output a true 1920 by 1080 display. Uh, it does look rather nice and uh, it does, you know, for basic kind of stuff like running with uh, the Outlook app here and other things, it does feel uh, pretty snappy. And we'll take a look at uh, Asphalt 8 here now and see how that runs. All right, well, we couldn't get Asphalt 8 installed on the device mainly because there's not enough storage space to, to load it up with. So uh, I instead went with uh, Fast and the Furious 6 here, kind of a similar driving game. Uh, and you can get a, get a feel for uh, how it can drive a display running a tablet game. So it seems to work pretty decently. Um, the graphics are certainly not slowing down at all. And again, this is more of a tablet game designed for slower processors, but uh, for this kind of device, it's perfect. So uh, I would say that, you know, compared to the HP Stream 7, they both perform about the same, uh, but if you want the larger screen and the HDMI port, then uh, this is something certainly worth considering. However, only 16 gigabytes of storage on here is a bit of a problem for me because I I can't install, nor can you, uh, install all that much on the device because there's just so little space available. So 32 gigs is very limiting on the HP, but 16 on the Best Buy machine is crippling. So I think where uh, this one comes into play is if you're looking to hook up to an external display, you're not going to install more than like a web browser and Microsoft Office tools and whatnot, uh, then I think this will do pretty well. But if you want to install more apps and do more things with your tablet, uh, and want something that's only 100 bucks, then I think the HP might be the way to go, even though uh, it does have the smaller screen. So that is the uh, Best Buy Insignia $99 8-inch Windows tablet, and this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching.